today on Dice and Dragons, we are going to be reviewing a card game based on one of my favorite IPs. Today we are covering Robotech, Force of Arms, published by Solar Flare Games and designed by Dave Killingsworth. Now, I'm the one that knows everything about Robotech, and this game simulates the first Robotech War. It really has a special place in my heart as this was the series that made me realize I really liked Japanese animation. I always liked some of the shows, but this was the one that kind of introduced it to me. I have seen Macross, almost all of them. I love this, but just to be clear, Julie knows nothing about Robotech. Did your brother watch the show at all? Nope. So she hasn't even seen an episode, but I'll let her tell you about the game anyways, because that's what she does. It is a, a versus game. It's yeah. uh, competitive. How I got roped into this, I don't know. <laughs> I guess because I married him. Uh, it's a two-player game. Plays in 20 to 30 minutes, though. Um, I think it might be a little bit faster. We can talk about that yeah, afterwards. I think that once you get the flow down, probably 15, 20 minutes. And it's for ages 14 and above. I think that's probably a good call. There's yeah. a fair bit of strategy in the game, but... We're not going to waste any more time here. We're going to show you guys how to play. The way we're going to do it is there's actually six turns essentially in the game. I'll show you guys about half of it, and then we'll go through each phase, explaining how to do each phase. I'll do some stuff off camera, then we'll finally see what player uh, wins. We'll do a full simulated game. But we're going to grab our drinks and grab our best friends, and let's get it to the table. You keep roping me into competitive games. Well, this one doesn't have a lot of straight take that mechanics. And if you've seen the show, you'd know that music and romance is a really big part of it. It's probably oh, enough. Oh, that's why you liked it, because there's romance. That's not why I like it. I like the mechs blowing stuff up, but uh -huh. there's romance as well. Uh -huh. Those of you that have seen Macross and Robotech, you know. But keep it right here. We're coming back in a flash. Now, before we take a closer look at Robotech Force of Arms, I just want to talk about the objective of the game. Something that we neglected to do in our intro. The objective of the game is going to be to play your fighters and to capture enemy ships or defend your ships by having the higher attack or defense value depending on the ship that you're going for. And the person that has the most victory points will be the one that wins the game. Now, if you happen to tie, you will set everything back up and you will keep going. But that is how you play the game. It is very simple, straightforward. With that being said, I'm out of here. Well, not exactly. You'll see me in two seconds, but we're going to take a closer look at the game. Keep it right here. It's coming up soon. Now we're going to take a closer look at Robotech Force of Arms. Now I'm just going to go ahead and give you guys a quick breakdown of how the review is going to go. What we will do is we're going to take a quick look at all of the components that we have in front of us. Then we'll individually take a look at each set of components, giving you guys a quick explanation of it. After that, we'll set the game up and I'll do sort of a, a mock playthrough almost, not going through all the game, but give you guys a chance to learn as I teach you the big aspects of the game. With that being said, let's take a look at the components. Now we'll start out with the rule book that we have right here. Now, unlike other rule books, you don't get a quick reference guide or anything like that on the back. The reason for that is we have two reference cards, one side showcasing the tokens, the other side showcasing the game phases. They're very useful. I do recommend having them out, at least on your first few playthroughs of the game. Next, we have the tokens. Now we've got attack tokens right here and defense tokens. Fairly clear, target, defense, not much more to get into. What we're going to talk a lot more about is the tokens that I'm pointing to right here. The RDF tokens in red and the Zentradi tokens in blue. You can see they're denoted as to what they are on the reference card. We'll take a look at that when we take a closer look at the tokens. Now let's look at the cards themselves. Now each player has their hero cards. So you can see they're denoted by your famous heroes of the Robotech Defense Force, guys like Rick Hunter, Max Sterling, who can forget the lovely lady, Lisa Hayes, and Henry J. Glovo. Then we have some thematic command cards, such as the Space Fold and Espionage. Who can forget the Batroid? Well, Batloid, if we're being uh, correct here. This is Robotech, not Macross, dressing up in his Entrati uh, uniform. And then we have our 
defensive cards and offensive cards for the RDF. I just separated some of them. You can see there are a nice stack of them right here that are a mix. The reason for that is you've got 12 cards. Both players are gonna be using 12 cards. And I just wanted to give a quick sampling. It is a lot easier to tell apart the RDF cards and the Zentradi cards. Defensive cards are represented for the RDF as Destroids, offensive as the Batlords. When we look at the Zentradi cards right here, you notice you have a defensive officer pod and an offensive officer pod. Now they do change the artwork, but it is still very similar and I find it can be a, a little confusing, but it is thematic to the show. We have a lot more selection of robots with the RDF than with the Zentradi. Now when we look at the Zentradi heroes, we've got guys like Britai, Chiron, Azonia, and of course the infamous Miria Perina. And then as well, some command cards, a total of four. You've got your defensive ace, because who can forget how well Miria fought and then infiltrate because these guys were uh, quite uh, important to the overall show and uh, how it resolves. And last but not least, we have the ship cards. Now, the ship cards are what you're going to be using to set up sort of your board. There will be an empty spot on the board represented by empty space. And just to note, this SDF1 card, they are the same ship, essentially, these two cards. When you get to transform the SDF1 playing uh, Henry J. Global, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, you will then play the attack mode card. And we've taken a quick look at all of the components. So let's take a closer look, starting with the tokens, explain what they do. We'll explain the cards uh, after that, and then we'll teach you guys how to play the game. Keep it right here. We'll be back faster than a space fold. Now we'll start by taking a look at the tokens that come in Robotech Force of Arms. I just want to highlight that I did not take out the attack and the defense tokens. They're very straightforward. Plus one attack, plus one defense. Now you've got your RDF tokens in red, your Zentradi tokens in green, and we'll talk about what each of them do. Now the Protoculture tokens, as you can see right here, they are able to be used as plus two attack when placed on an enemy ship, plus two defense pl when placed on your own ship. Now the ship lock tokens, that you can see right here, are able to lock a ship in place on the board, meaning it cannot be moved by something like a command card we're gonna see later on uh, reposition in the later stages of the game. And then finally, we've got the spy and counter spy tokens. Now what you may do with those is you may reveal a fighter so that you can see what is trying to attack uh, your, uh, your ships and what space they're in or you can counter one of the tokens. For example, you can counter a ship lock token or an attack and defense token. The protoculture tokens are not able to be countered. And now that we've taken a look at the tokens, we'll start taking a closer look at the cards. So keep it right here. We'll be back in the space fold. Now we're taking a look at the heroes and villains of Robotech Force of Arms. Or, depending on your point of view, you know, the Zentradi guys, they're not really villains. They can also be heroes. Now, I'm not going to go over all of the hero abilities. I just wanted to take a closer look and discuss some of what they can do. Now, for example, Chiron, and I'll lift the card up to the camera here. He lets you place two attack tokens on any one of your ships and then gain four attack tokens to place on any orthogonally adjacent enemy ship. So think of it like a suicide attack or a battering ram. And for those of you that don't know what orthogonally means, it means anything at a 90 degree angle. So in this case, Max Sterling, Azonia, or Britai, those are the cards that are orthogonally connected to Chiron. Now let's take a look at Henry J. Glovo. Now, when you're playing him, if you play this card, you can transform the SDS one and execute the Daedalus Maneuver Place three attack tokens on one orthogonally adjacent enemy ship. Change out the SCF-1 card. So that's what would let you flip over your SCF-1. And then you would place three attack tokens on, for example, let's say these were, this is the SCF-1. 
you would have Max Sterling and Brita that would represent the ships that are orthogonally connected. So as you can see, the hero abilities are very powerful and you can only play one hero during your command phase. It is two command cards and one hero card. Let's take a look at some of the other famous guys. Let's take a look at Rick Hunter. So Rick Hunter gives you gain three tokens in any combination of attack or defense, then immediately place one token on any three different ships. So you get some, uh, some nice choices there and you can place them on three different ships. They can't go on the same ones. Then finally, we'll take a quick look at Miria. Now Miria lets you gain three attack tokens and place one token on three different enemy ships. As you know, she's a very strong combatant. You can boost your attack by one on three different ships. Doesn't matter where they're placed. So this is just a quick taste of the hero cards that are in the game. What we'll do now is we'll take a look at the command cards. Then we'll take a closer look at the fighters. Keep it right here. We'll be right back. Now we're going to take a quick look at the command cards that come in Robotech Force of Arms. And most of them actually are fairly uh, symmetrical. The only two that have some slight differences are the Reflex Weapons and the Defensive Ace. So we'll take a quick look at these two cards. So you pick one of your attack fighters and add one defense token to all of your ships in the fighter's column or row. Whereas with the reflex weapons, you will pick a defensive fighter and you will add one attack token to all of the enemy ships in that column or row. The secret missions are identical. I'll just bring it up close so that you can take a look. You may swap one of your tokens with any one of your other tokens. It also may be a protoculture token. When you're looking at espionage, you may remove two enemy tokens from the play area. Infiltrate does the same thing. And fold and reposition lets you swap the location of your ships as long as they are not locked. And these two are identical. So swap the location of two. So let me be clear, it is two of your ships. So those are the command cards. We've now taken a quick look at that. So we're gonna move on and take a closer look at the fighters and stay with us. We're coming back shortly. Now we're taking a closer look at the fighters in Robotech Force of Arms. Now you notice that I did not take out all 12 fighters. I do have them off to the side right here. Just to give you guys a quick look, you can see the others in Trotty cards. And then you can see well, of course, you got Max's uh, Battleoid and the other RDF cards. And who can forget uh, the VF1S Skull 1? But these are some of the cards that actually have some interesting effects. And I also want to just talk about the, like, the inverse of the cards as well, the attack and the defense. Now, what you'll notice is we have the Destroy Tomahawk and... If you play it face up, you gain three defense tokens. Now why that's important is during the token phase of the game, if you play this card face down when you're able to play it, you will not have any defense tokens. Now you may want to play it face down, that may be part of your strategy, but you're going to have less tokens for the token phase. And you'll notice here that it's inverse. If played, no, that's not the inverse, sorry. The inverse of that one is the reconnaissance spot over here. If played face up, gain three attack tokens. You'll notice that they are like really very much the inverse. This is three defense. This is also three offense. Now, when we take a look at the Batloid, the VF1R here, if played face up, gain three attack tokens. That's its mirror image of the reconnaissance pod. To also get your protoculture tokens, you'll need to play the light artillery pod. So if played face up, gain two protoculture tokens. And there's an inverse available for that one as well. I just didn't put it out. The Batlord VF1J, Rick's uh, first uh, fighter. If played face up, gain two ship lock tokens. The inverse for that one is right here, the light artillery pod. And then you can see the officer's pod and the destroyed phalanx are your standard fighters, but they have some great values. This one of five defense, this one of six offense so those are the fighters we've taken a quick look at them now what we're going to do is we're going to set up the game and as we set up we'll take a closer look at the ship cards for you guys just to give you an explanation of how their defense works and now they also give you victory points keep it right here coming back in a flash now we're going to set up the play area in robotech force of arms in order to do that we need our 
10 ship cards, but actually one of them we don't need. The attack mode version of the SCF-1 gets removed from our setup. It only gets played if someone plays Henry J. Glovo. Now what you do is you shuffle up the cards, get a good mix of them, and we're gonna be playing out a three by three grid. We'll start with the Zentradi Heavy Cruiser. Also a Zentradi Carrier, Empty Space, the SCF-1, Armor 5, Zentradi Flagship, Zentradi Strike Cruiser, the Oberth, and Armor 1. And that is going to be our playboard. And what we do in the game is we have these two sides, the adjacent sides. Well, four sides, actually, if you look at it, it's a square. The first player will pick which two adjacent sides they want to play on. It could be this one and this one, this one and this one, this one and this one, so on and so forth. It's fairly straightforward, but I also wanted to take a look at the ship cards themselves. So let's take a look at them. Now, what you will see is the with the birth right here, it is worth three victory points, and it has a natural two defense. When you compare that to the Zentradi Heavy Cruiser, which is only worth one victory point, and has zero natural defense. Now, each card sort of has its corresponding brother. As you can see, the Zentradi Heavy Cruiser corresponds with Armor 1. And when you're taking a look at the Oberth, which corresponds to the Zentradi Carrier, two defense, three victory points. And of course, the F SCF-1 corresponds to the Zentradi Flagship. And that is how you set up the board. What we're gonna do now is I'm gonna just reposition things so we'll have a nice clear play space to lay out the fighters. And then we'll start teaching you guys how to play the game. We're gonna go through each phase. Keep it right here, coming back soon. We've set up our play space and we're ready to teach you how to play Robotech Force of Arms. So what we're going to do now is we're gonna go through the tactical phase. Each player has their 12 fighter cards. You can see we've got our fighter cards here. And to determine who goes first, what you do is you shuffle up the cards and then face down like this. You're gonna flip over the top card. The player with the highest value right there is the one that will go first. Now, I'm gonna keep the fighters off camera just to keep this play space a lot cleaner. I've determined that the RDF player will go first, selecting these two sides as their play area with the Zentradi player selecting these two sides as their play area. Now, let's take a look at what we want to do with the RDF player. Well, I maybe want to defend the SDF-1. Maybe also bait them as well as we've got some nice area to potentially attack. We'll start by playing the Destro Defender face up. The reason for that is we'd like to get some Protoculture tokens, which I'll select here and just place right in this corner. That'll be our stack of RDF tokens. And I'd like to attack them a little bit too. I could use the VF1J, but then I would not be able to gain any ship lock tokens. So even though it's a strong attack, maybe a little bit more than what I wanna do, I'm gonna play the VF1S, and that gets played face down. Now I'm also able to move some stuff around on the board here. What I'll actually do is I'm gonna swap the positions of the Oberth and the Zentradi Strike Cruiser, make it look like I only want to defend here as I'm stacking that uh, defense card. Now we've got the Zentradi's turn, and we probably want to attack the SDF-1. We've got a lot of nice things that we can attack in this row. So why don't we start with the heavy missile pod, play that face down. But we also want to start putting together some tokens now what, what do we want here? That's defense. Let's go full out attack. So if we play this card face up, we would gain three attack tokens. Play it right there, face up. And you know what, just so you guys can see it, I'll play them all like this uh, from now on. We shall gain our three attack tokens that I'll just place up here. And we'll move some stuff around since I'm going all out attack. Let's get our flagship out of there and try to take on this entire row. 
So that's the end of really each player's first turn. I'm gonna go through two more turns, then I'll just play some turns off camera, get the board all set up, and we'll go through the token phase. Now back to the RDF player's turn. Now do we want to attack or defend? We've got everything in a nice line right now. And as this might be where they're trying to attack, we could just really stack a lot of defense. We got defense going here. So maybe we want to defend and defend. We can try to really take this corner up as ours. So what I'll do is I'll play the this destroyed phalanx, five defense face down. And then also play the tomahawk face up to gain three defense tokens. Place those there. And hmm, I want to move some stuff around. I don't quite want everything in this row. So I'll move armor five with the Zentradi cruiser. And we'll leave it like that because it makes it look like we're really trying to stack this more. But we've got some nice defense there. The main important thing is we have a lot of defense on the SDF-1 for the moment. Now we go look at the Zentradi stuff. Now our flight ship is fairly secure. But I do want to bring some more pressure here now. Play the officer's pod face down. And I'd like to get my ship lock token, so we'll play the light artillery pod face up to gain the two ship lock tokens. So we'll stack right there. And let's move some stuff uh, around. Right now, we don't really want to move anything in here. Now, you don't have to move anything around, but. I want to be able to do something maybe a little bit later on. Clearly, we don't want to move anything here. I don't like the empty space necessarily where it is because it's near the Zentradi flagship. I want to be able to stack more defense on some of my stuff later on, at least my more important stuff like the carrier and the flagship. So I'll move the empty space there as my turn. Now we'll take a look once again at our RDF player. And he's got a nice attack vector right here. Maybe even move that cruiser or that cruiser to take the place of armor one. So we're just gonna go full on uh, attack. We'll play the Batloid face down for the six attack value. And we'll play the VF1R face up right here as that's gonna give us three attack tokens. And let's swap out armor one and move the Zentradi in a position where we can potentially uh, kick their butts. So for the last turn that I'm going to do on camera with the Zentradi player, we got all of our stuff there. And you know what? I kind of like keeping everything there. We'll play the officer's pod for six defense face down. What we'll then do is we'll play the light artillery pod face up to get our protoculture tokens. and add the two protoculture tokens to the Zentradi pile. And what do I want to do? We've got a lot of defense, a lot of attack potentially here. I don't necessarily like armor one right here now. They've got some defense there. What do I want to do? I'm still not sure, but I want to move this here and move this up. The birth is a higher point value. They're going to spend more on potentially defending it. Maybe I can pick off both of those with an attack along this axis and this axis. So we'll do that for now. That is the turn. And what we're going to do is I'm going to cut right here. I'm going to keep playing and moving stuff around. And then we'll come back though with the token phase once everything's been played. So we've moved on from the tactical phase. As you can see, the board has changed. And just to keep things simple, I've kept placed the RDF tokens now in reach. I did decide to play all the cards that generate tokens face up. 
And I've got the Zentradi tokens within reach as well. Now, I'm not gonna play out all of them. That would just be long and maybe not all that interesting, but I'll show you what a lot of them do. Now, in this case, we want to attack, but we also want to defend. It is still the RDF player's turn. We are gonna play a protoculture token for defense on the SCF1. Now, that can't be blocked. What we'll also do, what's then gonna happen, the Zentradi player wants to lock the SCF1 in place. But if we don't want that, the RDF player can play a counter and essentially counter the ship lock. That was their play. Now, SCF1 player can play the ship lock again. Now the RDF player may decide the counter or save that counter for something else. Well, they don't want to do that. They would rather, so realizing that the Zentradi player is trying to lock it in place, we're going to just stack protoculture tokens on the SCF1. Zentradi player will then play their protoculture token on the SCF1. Instead of just focusing on one card, let's get some other stuff going. They want some attack, as we've got some potential to attack there. If you cruise, we'll place one attack there. Now, the Zentradi player does not want that attack to go there, so they will counter the token. It's now the RDF player's turn. Look more at the flagship. We'll counter that one as well. Defend their flagship. Well, no, actually, sorry, it's the RDF player's turn. We'll play plus one damage on the flagship. No more counters. We want to defend our flagship as a Zentradi player. And that's going to continue until all of the tokens uh, are played. So as you can see how the, the phase works and how the counter tokens are used, they are used to counter a move immediately thereafter. So we've gone through this phase. We're now gonna go through the command phase. And I may do the whole thing because it's only three cards. So keep it right here. We'll come back with the command phase. So now we're moving on to the command phase. It is the last active phase of the game. After that, we will resolve everything and move on to scoring. Now, for the command phase, it is the second player that will go first. As I was a Zentradi player, the Zentradi player gets to go first. And we have our hero cards that we're able to play and our command cards. Now, we can only play one hero and a maximum of two command cards. Now, I'm going to start with Chiron because for an interesting position, we've got the Zentradi every cruiser here. Now, what Chiron does, it means you place two attack tokens on any one of your ships, gain four attack tokens, place them on any ship that's orthogonally adjacent to the enemy ship, meaning the SCF-1, or it doesn't try to carry it, but it's our ship, so no, just the SCF-1 playing Chiron. I'll discard him. We will take six attack tokens from off camera here. We place two on my heavy cruiser and a total of four on the SDF-1. It is now the RDF player's turn, and oof, things aren't looking good. Let's, let's defend the SDF-1. Actually, defending the SDF-1 is probably the better move, but to teach you guys more about how to play the game, we're going to play Henry J. Glovo. We'll transform the SDF-1 and execute the deadness maneuver, place three attack tokens, on one orthogonally adjacent enemy ship. Now it's not necessarily the smartest move, but like I said, we're teaching you guys how to play. So that is the card that we're playing. I'll just put it right here. We then transform the SDF-1. Whew, that's a mound of tokens to get under it. It is a battleground for this ship. And you know what? It might be a little bit weird for a how to play, but it's very thematic. And then we place three attack tokens 
on our orthogonal engine. So that's heavy cruiser. So that's a good response to that. It means probably getting the heavy cruiser. The only problem is it's only worth one victory point. Now, we can play our command cards. The hero cards, there's no point in showing them to you. They cannot be used. What I'm going to do is I'm going to play defensive ace, pick one of your attack fighters, and add one defense token to all of your ships in that fighter's row or column. Now, I'm going to double check right here. I actually only have defense fighters, so that can't go there. Attack fighters, oof. See, you know what? I didn't quite think that through. Defensive ace is not going to be a good card to play. Now, what I might do... Hmm. I'm actually going to play Infiltrate at this point. I do not want them to have it as good defense on the SCF1. And I can remove two tokens, any two tokens. There's only one defense token. So I'll move one and one there. But you cannot remove any protoculture tokens. So just remember that. No protoculture tokens can be removed. And that'll be the Zentradi player's turn. We'll then look just at the command cards. And we'll also play Espionage, just because it's such a mess right there for the SDF-1. And the best thing to do is to get rid of these two pluses to attack, these plus two attack tokens, well, plus one attack tokens. And then we will go back to our Zentradi player. And we can swap one of our tokens with one of our other tokens. I will actually play the secret mission. This may not be the best move, but right now everything's piling up on this card, so I want to try to do... I, I don't know. See, this is where there's a question I have because I place those attack tokens. Do they count as my tokens? So I will not play the secret mission, but that just highlights a confusion, and uh, I do suggest looking for some uh, errata. What I will play is uh, actually... I'm going to play reposition. This may or may not work out in my favor, but it's a good chance to show you guys how to play. And we're just gonna move this heavy cruiser and the strike cruiser. And that is the last card that I got a chance to play. We will now take a look at what's left for our RDF player and I think I'm going to use Reflex Weapons because pick one of your defensive fighters and have one attack to all enemy ships in the fighter's row or column. Wow. We've got a nice row that we can just strike right here. Actually, look, same situation. It's all defensive. But we have an attack fighter right here, actually. Let me just play the Reflex Weapons card so you can see it. We have a nice attack fighter right here. We can attack two. And it's one two more attack that we've got on there. And that is the command phase. Now, all we need to do is flip everything over and score the game. So keep it right here. We'll come right back with scoring. So we will now score the game. To do that, we are going to flip over all of the face down cards. And we're gonna make sure that their values are visible and then we're going to go through each space and we shall resolve everything. Now, I'm not sure how well I've actually gone ahead and played the game, but the whole point of this was teaching you guys how to play, not play the, uh, the perfect game uh, per se. And we've got a couple more that are hidden. Oh, and it looks like I did make a mistake, actually. The Batloid here was an attack card. I could have actually done this entire row with uh, reflex weapons, but we'll leave it as is. It's not that big of a deal. I just made a slight uh, mistake, and I'll add a correction to the, uh, to the video. All right, let's resolve. Oh, got to flip this guy over. We'll resolve this row first, which is uh, the biggest mess. Now what we're going to do is we're going to total up the attack value on this space. 
which is a total of four and five for nine. Now, the Zinjardic Strike Cruiser has a defense of one. Now, when we take a look at what we have, and I'm just fixing that card as I put them back sideways, we do not have any defense here. We have a total of five and three. So this is actually a tie with nine and nine. Now that's a very good question. I'm actually unsure as to how to properly resolve uh, a tie. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to move on and we'll come back after I take a quick look at the rule book. So let's take a look at the SDF one. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna place these cards here to uh, remind myself that this, uh, actually, you know what, just the one, remind me that this needs to be resolved. Now what we're gonna do, we'll take the ship lock token, get the heck out of there. We have the two protoculture tokens that cancel each other out, we'll kick them out of there. And this protoculture token cancels out two of these attack tokens which leaves us with this scenario. Now let's take a look. We've got a total of three defense, plus three defense, plus five, that is 11, plus four gives us a total of 15 defense. We have a total of eight, six, 10. So at this point, we also have the plus one. It is the Entrati player that captures the SEF one. And I'll just start placing the victory pile right there. And I'll do the same for the other cards. Now I'll resolve the armor five. The two tokens cancel themselves out. Defense is a total of one, two, three, plus four is a total of seven. Our attack value here is 10, 13. This shall go and fall to the Centrati player. We'll now move on to the next row right here. We can get rid of the empty space. Doesn't matter. We're not going to be doing that. We'll take a look at the Zentradi carrier, which is two defense and is under attack by a total of four and one for a total of five. And when we're looking at the defense value, we've got already a total of eight. So the RDF player does not successfully capture this Zentradi carrier, which means it also goes to the Zentradi player. It's not looking good right now for the uh, RDF. Much like the show, it wasn't always looking good. We'll look at armor one with a defense total of two, three, and it's being attacked by a total of three. So this one actually as well is, oh, plus one. There's a plus one defense. I almost didn't notice it. So at this point, this actually goes to the RDF player because of that plus one token. Whew. Very close. Now we'll take a look at the Oberth. Now for, we think you don't have any defense here, but we've got two defense there, meaning we have a total of four defense. This is primarily defense here, total of three attack. There is only the plus one, we cancel that out. The Oberth has been successfully defended by the RDF. They will gain their ship. Let's resolve this insane heavy cruiser. We have nothing but attack on it. All defense here, but a total of nine attack. All attack, total of 10 defense. So even though these cancel out, these attack tokens that are just stacked means that this bad boy belongs to the RDF. And finally, we will resolve the flagship. Now, we've got the ship block, which we don't need. This protoculture token cancels out these two tokens. We have a total attack of nine plus the four for 13 is three defense we have 13 right here but also a lot more defense meaning this goes to the zentradi player now 
I'll just strain the cards up. Sorry that some of them uh, slipped off camera there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a quick look at the rule book. We'll be right back. We'll determine the fate of the Zentradi Strike Cruiser. And after that, we will count up the victory points. Keep it right here, and we're going to finish up scoring in a moment. And we're back, and I've determined what happens. When there is an equal attack or scoring value, everyone ties. No one gets the victory points for the ship. So it is just going to get tossed. And what I'm going to do now is I will just clean up the play space. We will move all of these fighters and extra cards out of the way. And we will total up our victory points. All in all, though, it's not looking too good for our Robotech Defense Force. Now, the Robotech Defense Force has a total of one, two, three, four, five victory points. And then when we look at the Zentradi, we have a total of seven plus five. So that is a nice 12. It is a complete route. Now, if the uh, RDF had been successful with the other two, it would be a lot closer. But uh, the Zentradi players just got the better of our heroes and that is the end of the game so keep it right here and we're going to the review so robotech force of arms i don't know what she's going to think about this but we'll, we'll let her start anyway what did you think of the game so as i said at the beginning or you stated at the beginning the ip doesn't mean anything to me i haven't played this um before but you seem to really enjoy it oh well, not played it you haven't watched it before i haven't watched it before i played it so i guess that's fair <laughs> You seem to really enjoy it, and from what I could tell, it happens in space, so okay. Um, if we go back to the beginning, it's a versus game, um, which is not normally my favorite type of game. It's also a strategy game, which you tend to do very well at, which makes it not much fun for me, because I'm normally three <laughs> steps behind you. So for that, it wasn't my favorite type of game. That being said, there are some things that I did appreciate about the game. I, I like that there's six turns um, and then the two other phases. I didn't, like I said, love the mechanic of um, moving the ships around. Of, of having of moving the ships all the time. I felt that that was too random for me uh, and didn't allow me to set a strategy. I'd like to be able to bait and switch, but have something at least that I can work around. Mm -hmm. uh, and in this case. It, you know, it worked for me the second time, not necessarily the first time. Um, so, so that I, I didn't love as much. Yeah, I actually like that mechanic because I think it simulates like, you know, battle. Well, to say every good plan doesn't survive contact with the enemy. So as more fighters come out, the, basically the field of battle keeps changing. But I do see what you're saying. You can't really build towards one strategy. And that's where I made a mistake. I, you were trying to do my strategy. You pulled something off like that I used to beat you the first time and you pulled something off at the end and I ended up losing because I misplayed one of my cards. So to that point, you're normally, you normally excel at these and I think this, the mechanics of this game held you back uh, because normally you would have creamed me. Uh, and in the games that we played, you- I can't plan ahead. Like, that's it. there's no way to really plan ahead. And in this, in this the two games that we've played, uh, they were pretty even. You beat me by two, I beat you by one. Mm -hmm. um, so then again, you know, it, I can appreciate it for what it is. It's not my favorite type of game. Uh, so if you've been watching the channel and when I say I love a game, I, uh, you agree, then this is not the type of game for you. Now, if you listen when, and you listen and you love what Jay <laughs> loves and you like the same things he does, you'll probably enjoy this one. I, I think it's the fair, fairest way to, to, to look at this. Not everybody likes the same type of games and this is just not a mechanic, a type of game that I love. Um, so f that's it for me. I can give it a rating, or would you like to talk about it first? No, I'll talk about it first, and we'll give our ratings at the same time. So what I mean by you can't plan ahead in the game is because of player two having their own actions. You can try to set thing, things up, but there's not like a strict structure that you can do in like certain games where it goes from A to B to C to D. Some of the things that you can do if you're planning ahead is going to be like, well, I'm going to make this move, and hopefully they think this when actually I want to do this, and I've got this plan coming up 
The other thing you need to take a look at is during the other phases of the game, like the token phase, how that's going to change the way the battle situation rolls out. And then don't forget, you've got your hero and command card phase, which is also going to change the way everything works out. And those two phases can be very powerful. You just really need to think about what you want to do with those cards. And you can sort of structure a plan, but you're never going to be like, I'm going to do A, B, C, D, E, and I'm going to win the game. That's my strategy. Now, I do like that part. It would be nice to potentially have maybe something that you can do for like the first part of the game. Maybe there is an opportunity to try to lock your ships down. And then as like what the other player can counter, as you saw with the counter tokens, but that means you lock or you counter. That could be one move, but it would also kind of be the same thing because if you someone goes to lock and you counter, well, then you're just in the same battle state. But it could be interesting because that could then weaken stuff for the next round. But I do get where Julie's coming from with regards to the whole everything's always moving around. Now, I do feel that it did a good job of simulating the IP. But there were some points that I really didn't like being a big fan of the IP. The fact that we only have the Veritech fighters in their, you know, big standing robot form, the Battleoid form. I didn't like it. I like the fighters. I love the fact that they're based on the F-14 Tomcat, and there was none of that iconography in the game. Now, there is the SDF-1 that has two cards, and I do think that's cool. That's thematic because it's in ship mode, it then transforms. However, the rulebook does not mention that you've got two of those cards, and you're not supposed to mix them in together. You do. We realized that after we were started playing the game and figuring stuff out, when one of the cards says, transform the SDF-1. So I was like, huh, well... That was interesting. Now, the other thing I'm going to look for a clarification. There is a card Infiltrate, which lets you remove two of the enemy tokens. But some of the other cards may let you actually damage your ship to do more damage. You know, like a suicide attack or the Daedalus attack from the show. I wanted to find out if we can remove those two tokens. Those two attack tokens that damage your own ship. So far... I haven't seen anything uh, online, I did a quick search. Now there could be an FAQ that I just didn't find, but that was the one like sort of negative point that I wanted to highlight. But overall, I think this is a well-built game. The mechanics are cool. There's some other games based on the other two Robotech Wars coming from Solar Flare games. Some of them sound like they may be a little bit more cooperative, so maybe uh, Julie will enjoy those ones uh, a little bit more. But the one thing I do want to say for the game itself is that it is very much a gamer's game and it being a two-player gamer's game, it might not have the place in everyone's collection. I can't see Julie and I playing this like once a week. I can definitely see her being like, oh, why not? I feel like thinking we'll play a strategy game maybe once a month or once every three months, something more around uh, those lines. But if you've got a game group, you've got some people that arrive a little bit earlier, usually and you've got you know one or two people that like you know you're playing a heavy euro or any type of really crunchy game this is a great warm-up game for two players especially once you get the flow of it you can play the game probably in about 15 minutes and it takes about no time to set up so i do enjoy the game it's well built well designed just a couple of little negatives but i don't think it's necessarily has a place in everyone's shelf so julie i'll let you rate the game now I'm going to give it a six because okay. I can understand how you enjoy it and I can understand how you probably would have a lot of fun playing against uh, somebody else. Uh, like that, Sammy G? <laughs> like Sammy G, like Mike. Uh, I think they might enjoy playing this. Uh, I, But for me, it's not a game that, you know, given everything else we have, it's not <laughs> one that I'm going to want to play again anytime soon. Yeah. And I'm, I'm going to give it a seven. And the main reason why I'm not giving it like 7.5 or an 8 despite how well designed it is there is just a couple of things that i did not enjoy i really really don't like not having the fighter modes for the veritex or the ability to transform them that is a big part of the ip and the big part of why i like robotech and that is just for me that's one full point being dinged off the game that being said the mechanics the design is very good that raises it for me and a couple of the few little rules and can inconsistencies such as not clarifying that you know all attack tokens count as the other players which you know probably found in an errata would have been nice to have and also the fact that 
it's a crunchy game. Like there was a lot of really cool strategies and things out there and I think it's very well designed, but being as crunchy as it is and as meaty as it is, I'm happy that I own it, but I can't see myself getting getting it played as much as I would like. I would have much rather seen like a cooperative version of this kind of card game because as we know, we love cooperative games, that's sort of our thing, and a quick co-op game that we can set up and tear down is something that we could probably play like almost once a day. Yeah, and I think we fairly well sum, summed it up. So you will see links to other videos popping above our head. Still did a great job with the, uh, the IP overall, and... If you like what you see, don't forget yeah. to like or subscribe. Write your comments below. We always like uh, seeing what you guys think. So yes, now we can grab our drink. You just love correcting me. Yes. Or did I give you a chance to correct me? Oh, maybe you did. <laughs> Cheers, Cheers and keep playing games. I think I should get you to watch the show. No, we got enough TV show to watch. Plus, yeah, you know, you get favorite. me to play games, as you say, every day. So TV, games, one of them. I have to have stuff that I can do too, you know. Or you just need to find better stuff that I like. Oh. <laughs>